Hi, my name is Ryan. Um, um, Ryan Aka from Take Back to Land, Rochester. Um, as most of you know, uh, today um, the Lennon Griffin family was evicted from their home at 9 o'clock today. The marshal came with support of about 20 police cars. Um, um, there was no um, issue from, you know, from Catherine. She put up no fight, but they came with extreme use of force um, um, to come and to move out all of her stuff. This has been an ongoing fight. She's been working so hard, as a lot of you know, to keep her home for years. Um, it's fallen on hard times. Um, Catherine can speak about her case um, specifically in a second. And um, take back the land. We've been here. We've been supporting Catherine for a little over a month. Um, you know, two weeks ago we did an eviction blockade here um, where the marshal showed up on Monday. There was over 40 protesters apparently when he got here and he said, you know, I'm not going to come. The next day they came again with, um, uh, with a moving truck and the marshal. And once again, there was a lot of people there, so they, they pulled back. And for over a week and a half we've been doing eviction watches, um, the neighbors coming out and other community supporters um, to watch this, watch this um, home, to keep people in their home and um, they've been successful so far but um, they decided this morning to ramp it up and that's when they came with extreme force um, to force Cassie out, uh, Kathy um, who's, um, who's here who's remaining in the home and um, five um, um, very courageous people sat down on the basis of principle and said um, there's something there's something larger here um, chanting the housing is a human right to as an act of civil disobedience to block the entrance to stop the move to stop the injustice what's going on and hopefully wake people up you know in best case scenario wake the police officers up that was not um, that was not they were here they weren't here to negotiate they didn't talk to anybody they immediately pounced on all five people were very forceful with a number of them and arrested five people um, about half an hour later they were also arrested two more people who were not obstructing anything they were across the street um, including a neighbor out here in her pajamas. Um, it, was, it was a really hard scene to watch today. It was very difficult. And um, um, so, you know, we're here to support this family. And the larger issues we're here to support are um, Take Back the Land believes the housing is a human right and that we should have community control over land and housing. And we're going to continue to fight and build in the way that the civil rights movement, to continue to keep going and keep going until they finally got a number of their demands for civil rights, we're demanding that housing is a human right, and all, and that all of our economic needs should be human rights. And that's and this is going to be a sustained, protracted struggle. And we're going to have to keep going. Take back the land has already liberated a number of houses in this community, and we're going to continue to liberate houses, open open houses, vacant bank-owned houses, for. Um, homeless people, people who need houses. We're going to continue to defend people who are being kicked out of their houses by the banks. The banks, of course, all of them received massive bailouts to keep people in their homes, but just pocketed the money and are continuing to rage this um, incredible war on um, people in our community. Um, we want to help you stay in your house. We're saying, we're not only saying this, we're saying, look, housing is a human right. We're going to defend people in their property. Look, everybody, everybody should have a home. Rochester has a humongous homeless population, and they just created another one. We're saying this to you. Before Rochester makes you a victim, come to us, check us out. Because, listen, if you don't if you don't stop them from, from your neighbor, who's going to stop them when they come for yeah, you? Well, speaking about right. take back the land right now, these people can help you. These people, like he says, Schumer, everybody's calling now. Why didn't they call before? But yeah. Ryan Acoff, if I'm saying it right, <laughs> these people are good people. And they went to jail for me on my behalf today. I didn't even go. Okay, do you see this? And uh, someone came in from school here, and she went to jail. Just, just hitting Rochester ground. She went to jail. Okay, she went to jail today. I'm sorry, but you went for a good cause. <laughs> but, you know, she really did. She, she's not even from Rochester. She came here on my street, and they, they handcuffed her and took her down. But I just want to say thank you, everybody, and I'm going through a lot right now. And I hope and pray no one has to ever go through what I'm going through right now. Serious. I want to thank everybody. So, thank you. Um, so Kathy, who's been the spearhead of this, uh, all these actions, um, 
You know, when we called her and, and, and when the marshal delivered the 72-hour notice, you know, she said, um, you know, I said, what do you want to do? You know, she called me, she said, and she says, I want to fight. And, um, and th this is the type of inspirational, courageous people we need, we need in all over our communities to say, we're taking hits all over, labor struggles, housing struggles, healthcare struggles, but we need people to stand up and fight back in all, 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 all places. And this is, and Kathy has been an inspiration to all of us, because um, this has been a pretty long struggle. We've been, we've been doing this pretty consistently for over two weeks. And, um, and this is this is really the courageous action I think what this is about, what these type of social movements are about. And um, I think there's a huge problem in Rochester just about apathy. You know, people always want to look look the other way. You know, when they see a homeless person or see somebody in need, they just want to look the other way. Or they want to they want to tell themselves, oh, you know, it's their fault or whatever they tell themselves to make it okay. But I feel like for things to really change, that really needs to stop. And I think this is a specific case where people can't just pretend that it's not relevant to their own lives you know this could be anyone um, oh this was a family who found uh, a little hard times and the bank refused to negotiate they just took her house a study about uh, Fannie Mae as you as you may know was uh, an agency that was meant to put uh, you know that prided itself over the years and as lobbyists would tout the fact that they put low-income people uh, people of color minorities into homes you know home ownership that was their that was their job that was their purpose well, they did a study, and over the course of the 1990s and 2000s, they looked at the rates of home ownership for people of color, for low-income people, for minorities, and it didn't budge one bit. And in fact, in the 2000s, it went down a little bit. They've gotten billions in subsidies over the course of those two decades. Where did the money go? You know where it went? It went into the pockets of the shareholders of Fannie Mae. It went into the pockets of the banks that they sold those mortgages off to. I went into the hands of the brokers who handled the paperwork. Uh, I think this, we have to see this in the, the bailout was just icing on the cake after 20 years of theft. We saw the bailout of the banks uh, as the greatest theft since the Spanish pillaged the Americas. And we have to get, to get our head around that fact, the massive transfer of wealth that has just happened in front of us. Now there's been some community organizing going on. Uh, people that live in Manhattan, they got all their neighbors together and they said, oh crap, we're gonna take a beating here if we don't start organizing. And so they took their second home in Washington, D.C. and they got all their neighbors around there, around the White House and the Capitol together too. And they said, we gotta do something about this. We gotta make sure that we, we still make a lot of money. And so they got together and they architected the bailout. Well, we need a different kind of community organizing and it started here today and I'm really I've just, you know, seen what's happened here, and I, I wish I could have been here earlier today, uh, and I was at work, and, and seeing this kind of community organizing is what took in the 1930s to defend people in their homes around the country. It took that kind of community organizing to bring people together to make them aware that we're all in the same boat here, that we're not in the same boat as Fannie Mae. We're never going to be the CEO of Fannie Mae. We're going to be our neighborhoods, and we should be proud to be living in our neighborhoods and proud to be working people, and I think that's the kind of fight it's going to take. So, I just uh, wanted so to let folks know that all day long, my email has been blowing up, the listservs that I belong to have been blowing up, and wanted to let folks know that there are folks all over this country um, connected to Poor People's Economic Human Rights Campaign, connected to Take Back the Land, who have been sending the footage from Take Back the Land Rochester out in solidarity, um, who have been sending information out. Please contact all our elected officials, and also the International Alliance of the Inhabitants, which is an international organization, has posted Take Back the Land Rochester's efforts on their web page so we have gone international and the struggle here in Rochester in is and everybody's working in solidarity for us so, so the coverage said talked about the crime tape that was all around here and it said how strange that was since no crime was committed and I said yeah yeah a crime was committed they stole her house today yeah. and that's a crime and we have to start using that language this isn't a foreclosure this isn't a business deal this is a crime. They took her home. She doesn't have a home anymore. And we better follow the money and make those, and those people are thieves, and we need to call them thieves. Okay? All, you know, everybody's been talking about in the economy all the money that's been lost. Lost? It's somewhere. It didn't disappear. It's in somebody's pockets. And those, we need to get that money back from those people, and they need to pay for what they're doing to the working people in this country and what they did today to Kathy. You know, one of the neighbors came out, um, asked what was going on, and she said, you know what, we called the police 
um, you know, I don't know, months ago, there was a suspected shooting. They could get a policeman here for, for anything. For, and then, just to put a grandmother out of her house, they've got 15 police cars here. It's just, I'm stunned. I'm, I'm just, I'm just absolutely... I was arrested today uh, protesting the eviction of uh, number nine, Ravenwood Ave, of a woman named Kathy, and Kathy Lennon, and uh, we, uh, we sat down on the steps in front of the house and, um, you know, said that we weren't going to move and were immediately arrested. And to my arresting officer named Romano, uh, I said, you know, I just want to be clear that we're not, we're not just out here to make your day more difficult. We're out here because we care about Kathy and we care about, you know, people staying in their homes and not being homeless. And, uh, and he said, you know, we have, he said very clearly we have no animosity towards you guys and was clearly very sympathetic, very cordial. Um, which is which is strikingly different from some of the interactions that we've had with police in the past. Um, when we arrived at the uh, the Monroe County Jail, um, it, we were in the waiting room waiting to be uh, have our pictures taken, our mug shots, and uh, we were able to engage in a conversation with three of our arresting officers um, sitting across from us. And throughout the course of our conversation, it became abundantly clear, both from their responses to what we were saying and just the expressions on their faces, that they were not only sympathetic to what we were saying, but were horrified about what they just did, arresting people trying to defend a grandmother and her children and grandchildren in her own home. Uh, and it finally culminated at the very end, as we were being released, in uh, one officer asking us, if, basically yelling to us across the room, hey, are you guys the ones who, uh, who were protesting the eviction of that grandma today out on uh, Ravenwood Ave, and we said yes. And he yelled across the room in front of all these other police officers, certainly loud enough for them to hear that uh, that was, in his opinion, a worthy cause to be arrested for. And that was just so inspiring to hear a law enforcement officer say something like that. So to me, that, that's an indicator that sentiment among our society right now is on our side and now is the moment to move. There's a foreclosure next to my my home and it's interesting because they just posted all these signs like if you're a renter don't rent this property because it's a owned by Fannie Mae like just specifically like all the signage targeting this type of activism so it was rather interesting. Now that they've kicked you out at, at, a, at, a, at a women's shelter, the women's shelter, and the rest of your family, they're scattered all over the city. We're in the city. We're what? We're in the city. One more time.